Hello and welcome to In Conversation. Today we have a very special guest, AICC General Secretary Oscar Fernandez in our studio and his missus to discuss about the HIV AIDS Convention which is being held in Guwahati since yesterday and today. Well, so we understand that a lot of uh, awareness campaigning is being done across India and especially Northeast where we see cases of AIDS being prominently coming up in Mizoram, Manipur and Nagaland. So how are we trying to you know, address the issue and what is the whole objective of holding the conclave here in Guwahati? Uh, we had a conclave in Guwahati in 2005. We had taken certain decisions and uh, now we are having a review of what has happened in this eight years. And uh, our main objective is to take it to the people. And the easiest way to take it to the people is through the people's representatives. So we have organized a conclave where Northeast chief ministers are there, the speakers of the assembly are there, the health ministers are there, the other ministers are there, members of parliament who comprise the forum in parliament. We are also very much here and we have interaction with the legislators. I don't think in the northeast we have many occasions where the whole lot of legislators assembled together to discuss any particular issue as such. True. But this is the second time where I participate in a de deliberation where the whole lot of elected representatives of the Northeast were present in 2005 and we are repeating it again today. So you had the parliamentary forum on HIV and AIDS and have been you know, gearing up uh, the parliamentaries and the legislators to you know, work for this course or to sensitize the people across the country on the issue which, which has a basic stigma attached to it across the country. So what is this parliamentary forum actually trying to boost up or how are you actually you know, putting all the legislators, parliamentarians together in the board? The point is uh, the political will. We'll talk of the political will. Political will doesn't mean only the government. Sure. Political will means all parties cutting across political lines, all MPs joining together on one single platform. That is the biggest achievement that we have. We have brought all members of parliament together. And uh, we have taken it down to the legislature and to the Jilla Panchayats. We wish we'll be able to take it to the panchayat level and sensitize our panchayat members on this menace that is affecting the people at large, not only in our country, in African, sub, uh, sub-Saharan uh, African countries. It is very much prevalent and the world over people are concerned about the disease. Now, HIV is, is such a thing that there is no cure for that. You have treatment, keep it under control, make people healthy and work, but you are not able to cure it so far. We have not been able to find a cure for this disease. But recent experiment shows that immediate after delivery, children have been administered this treatment and after two, three years, they have found that there is no positive sign in the children. This is a, a big development that we have found. The second important thing, what we have a message is, even if a woman is pregnant woman is found positive, if we administer medicine on her before delivery, it is not necessary that child did acquire the disease. If the child is born without HIV and AIDS, it is going to be a big achievement. This awareness we want to create at every level of political leadership. The government of India is giving us total support. We started this movement, not today, about 12 years ago, we started the movement. Then the government, led by 
Dr. Vajpayee ji gave us full support. And when he was the Prime Minister, he requested Srimati Sonia Gandhi to lead the Indian delegation to the United Nations, which had a special session of the United Nations on HIV and AIDS. And that is how you find that there is total understanding between all the political parties in fighting this menace of HIV and AIDS. Sir, like uh, when we are talking about HIV and AIDS, and if I just want to put a focus on the Northeastern region, where we see unprotected sex, drugs use, it seems to be one of the cause of the rising number of cases which are being detected in Mizoram, Manipur, and Nagaland. So, according to uh, the data which we have, which uh, maybe you also have the similar data which we refer to, but are we actually doing some studies to understand? Are this is the cause which I am pointing out? is the main cause or there are yeah. other issues which no, you know not, not many other issues basically it is through the sex route maybe 80 85 percent is through the sex route the other is through the injectable drug users who are using the same common syringes to exchange the medicine now this is the basic cause the third one is blood transfusion where maybe lapses are there, you may have obtained blood from an affected person and it is not tested properly given to another person, the infection will go to the person who receives the blood. These are the various cases, men having sex with men, these are the common ways through which the disease is spreading. We have created awareness and uh, India was number two in the world number taking into consideration but today I am happy to say with the kind of awareness created in the country it has come to number three and the infection rates have come down by 50 percent. So we understand that you know a lot of information education and communication or the IEC programs are being held in different parts of the northeastern region to create awareness or to sensitize the e people about the issue. We understand that the young people are becoming prey to this uh, disease uh, or the menace which we can say. So in such a scenario, are, don't you think that you know we need to you know put the youths also together not only just you know putting them into awareness program but also into a process where youths are becoming sensitive because education is one thing they are educated but still they go for unprotected sex they still go for you know drugs these are the challenges which we see education we are saying that we are educated Mizoram is a case where people are literate but still we are saying that youths taking drugs youths going for unprotected sex youth are youth whether they are educated or they are not educated youth have their issues, problems, urges are very much there. But I am happy to say that the parliamentary forum had organized a mock parliament session mm -hmm. in Delhi and in that about 4,000 youth from all over the country, uh, from the colleges, universities and from the your Sangatan, near York Sangatan, 4,000 delegates participated in that. And in that session, the youth told us, we give you a legislation. You parliamentarians have not brought in a legislation so far. So we are giving you a model legislation. You try to legislate. So our effort has been to take on board the youth also in the universities, in the colleges. We go and have interaction with them, create awareness in the youth. And that has given us good, good results. That's why I said all over the country, the infection rate has come down by 50%, which is not a mean achievement for a country like India. So when we are saying that you know, youths will be taken into the board or they will be part of the process where we educate and sensitize the youths so that the stigma can be removed, so that they know what they are supposed to do. So in such a scenario, well, when we are saying again about Northeast, the case is the stories are very, very depressing, especially from Nagaland and Mizoram. I'm referring to the states again and again because these are the states where, from where we hear a lot of cases. So the numbers are not much, but still the scenario is uh, alarming because now, we say that we the, want to eradicate the menace. Out of the six uh, high prevalent states, two were from the Northeast, Manipur and Nagaland. Now, 
you have added Mizoram to that. Mm -hmm. But overall picture, if you take the overall picture, the infection rates have gone down. But in certain areas, they are spreading. So there is a need to have a better uh, watch over these areas and to take the program to the people. And this is exactly the reason why we are holding the conclave or the convention in Gauhati. This is the second program we are having in Gauhati. Uh, the first one we had it in 2005. This is the second one we are having. And after this, already the states have started their own legislature forum. The Manipur forum is very active. The Nagaland forum is uh, very active. You have the um, uh, Manipur forum, I have told you. Uh, the legislators are spending money from their local area development fund to create awareness. In Meghalaya, the legislators are spending money from their development fund to create awareness. Mizoram, they are doing it. Uh, Arunachal Pradesh, there is a very active participation in the conclave by the chief minister himself, by the speaker, by the legislature. Similarly, from Nagaland, a very strong delegation has come with the speaker as the head of the delegation. Meghalaya speaker is also very much here. Mizoram speaker is here. This shows the interest. Meghalaya chief minister was present yesterday. Arunachal chief minister is present yesterday and today. CM Assam was kind enough to host the uh, convention in Gauhati. The health ministers of Assam of various states, Mizoram, um, Manipur, uh, they have all come, Arunachal Pradesh, they are all here and they are lending their support for the conference. So we will continue with our discussion but right now we will head in for a short break.